You are watching the Movacon HMI Editor Basics self-guided video tutorial series. In this video I'll demonstrate a few editing tips and explain how to work with HMI variables. Hi, I'm Matt Pelletier. For this video I am assuming you've already completed the previous videos in the series. There is no mini lab for this section, so please just follow along the best you can. And the first thing I want to talk about is project options, both as the project execution properties and screen properties. These options affect how the screen appears on the HMI device and the HMI runtime. To see this, you'll have to load your projects onto the HMI. So I'm going to do that here to the device path ending in training project and upload to the device. It's OK about the startup screen. Just always select the default speed here and then start device project. You can keep an eye on this in the VNC viewer. The screen display issue that I'm going to point out here is just the fact that the text seems kind of hard to read and the circular buttons seem to be more oval shaped than circular like they looked in the runtime itself. The problem here is not the VNC viewer or the HMI hardware itself. The problem is that the entire screen dimension is attempting to fit inside the remaining area after this menu system here at the top is displayed and the status bar at the bottom. This is called fit in window and it's a property of the screens and our project the main screens have this fit in window property under style. To get rid of that I'll just select those five screens and uncheck fit in window. Apply that and now let's try to upload again. Upload project. Yes. Default speed. Yes to all. It already exists. If you're doing this with me here I know the upload is going to take a lot longer than what I'm showing on the screen. So just pause the video if you need some time. Now we'll start that device project. All right so it's shutting down the previous version and now we've got the new version. The text looks a lot clearer, but where did our buttons go? They're down here at the bottom. There's scroll bars now. And sometimes there are refresh issues with this method. So I dare say with most applications, this is not a valid solution. What we need to do is either get rid of these top and bottom status and menu bars, or else account for the space that they take up when designing the screen dimensions in the first place. So first I'll just show how to get rid of those. You go to the project level, properties, and look at the execution properties. The status bar at the bottom here is very simple to recognize, but the menu bar at the top can be removed by checking start full screen. Apply, and let's send that to the device. Upload, default speed, yes to all, and start project. Look at the device. And now it looks great. We can navigate to all the different screens. Everything looks pretty well dimensioned here and aspect ratio as expected. You don't have that file menu bar up here and you also don't have that status bar at the bottom. In many cases, however, you might want that status bar. It does have some useful information. So it helps to know that at least for the 7 inch smart panel product, the status bar takes 19 vertical pixels and we can just account for that in our layout of the project. So I'm going to do that. Right now all of our main screens have a dimension of under general 800 by 480. So if I want to include space below that for the 19 pixel status bar, I'll just change all those to 461. Okay. Do you want to scale up and down the symbols? I think if I do that, it's just going to turn all of those circular objects into ellipses again anyway. So I would select no for each of these. Now let's take a look here at each one. There's the auto screen and the embedded screens are still here 50 for the height, but the control now should be 461 minus 50, that's 411. Change that height to 411. 
and I'll go to the original control screen also under general properties to change that height to 411. Okay. Do I want to scale? No, don't scale anything. I will just manually rearrange everything so it fits. Okay. Now at the project property, I'll go to execution here to show the status bar. And let's see how that looks on the device. Upload. Default speed. Yes to all. Start device project. And now here's the new version. It looks like maybe I had to reposition the navigation bar. So I will do that. Close this. Let's look at auto. Yeah, I didn't check that before. Let's just move that navigation bar back. Should probably check all of these here. And really what I need to do here is to copy this new resized embedded screen. Copy. Let's update that on each one. Delete and paste that in. Next, jog zero, delete, and no, paste that one in. Yeah, this will affect the jog screen size also, won't it? Let's just do these alarms here first. Delete, no, paste, move it up, and the recipes screen. Delete the old control panel, don't check that. Paste, and move this to the bottom. Did out the jog zero was the wrong size. Now it is, I'll just uh, draw it in here the right size. And let's see what size that is. 600 by 360. And we said 30 pixels for the tabs. So let's be sure that we get 330 high for the X, X and Y here. Yeah, it looks like I had these the wrong size previously. So let's just fix that up. They should be, all of these should be, 600 by 330. I think in this case I will scale all these down. Yes, yes, and yes. This is x-axis, and for each button you can just check the height and width under position, and these all look okay. Let's look at the y-axis. If the width and height are not the same, I can do that here. Maybe 100 by 100 and then select the other ones at the same time and use same width, same height. And I'll just do that here for the z-axis also. Make this button 100 by 100. Control select the other objects. Same width, same height as the first one selected. Let's try this now in the device. Upload project. Default speed. Yes to all start the device project and now here is what we have all the circles look equally dimensioned for each of the axes i've got the setup screen here looks like maybe i need to adjust the alarm testing group box and i think this button itself is just not exactly dimensioned right in the first place but you see everything is laid out and fits and i do have the status bar down here at the bottom showing the communication status and other interesting data like the date and time. You do see how it does take quite a bit of work to fix this up after the fact. So ideally you would consider the dimension of this status bar before you lay out your screens or just take advantage of the fit in window option if that's good enough. I'm going to exit this and show you what happens with the runtime though. I'll close this here. Now the runtime appears full screen because we had full screen checked, but it does not fit in the window of the full screen. But not only that, there is no way to move or reposition this window. So it's kind of nice how it's the exact pixel for pixel representation of what will be on the HMI. But unless you have a screen that you can dedicate to this, this may not be the best selection for development when you are using the runtime. So I will stop this, and you just have to remember then to deselect Start Full Screen for the project options under Execution when you are using the runtime, and then check it again when you're going to upload to the device. So I will not select Start Full Screen, and let's see how this looks. The screen I happened to be on in the edit mode did have Fit to Window, so I'll have to 
select here one of the main screens and then you see it like before but now it's in a window that I can resize and move it around as need be but of course if I make the window smaller it's not going to fit in the window it's just going to crop it off the next tip I'd like to show here is what happens when you select an object and then change screen so for example here in the editor I'm on the Z axis and I'll select the jog minus button and the properties shows here button 4 if I have the tabs open I could go to another screen such as control and click on the start button which apparently is also a button 4 stop is button 6 now if I were to go back to the Z axis it still shows the jog minus button and it's still called button 4 but if you look carefully this is not the jog minus button properties this is button 4 from the control screen the HMI start command is still selected it's not button 4 even though you do see that indication here it's not quite the same and so it's important that before you change the properties the last thing you did should have been to click on that object don't simply look at the selection outline and assume that that's the button properties you see here again because it could have been selected in a different screen now one thing you could do takes a little bit of time here but is you could instead of leaving the button name as button 4 on all the different screens you could go to the general property and type in an object name for example this would be Z jog minus and that can help you distinguish between the different buttons when you see the property title bar here it shows a more descriptive name next I've got a real simple tip here which is the object tool tip you go to a screen such as the control panel and if you just hover over you've probably noticed this if you just hover over a button or any object it shows you briefly a summary of everything that's been changed and all the variables that are part of it and for example it says shift double click to edit command properties I could try that shift double click and it brings you straight in the command list of course you know we can get there by just clicking on it and going up to the commands on release and commands on pressed and you get to that same command list on a button like stop which has commands on release and pressed shift double click brings up this first one here commands on release finally here I'd like to give a little introduction to variables in the HMI so far the only variables we've used is that sysvar and the variables that we imported from the controller project but you know the HMI itself can contain its own local variables and this can be useful as an intermediate variable or just to make some kind of calculation for display in the HMI there are a couple main ways to do this the first way would just be go into the real-time DB in the project Explorer and go into the variables list and right click new variable prompts you for the name maybe I want to call it temp one and click OK then just like any object in the software the properties show the name and description one critical and basic property is the data type which by default is always word but you can change that to a bit or whatever type of data that you happen to want to use such as float with a decimal point you get the idea another important property is this one called retentive not shared and this is essentially the same thing as in MotionWorks IEC the retain variable means that the data the value of this variable whatever it happens to be will be retained and saved in the HMI surviving a power cycle now it's not always convenient to make a variable this way you may have an edit box and you're trying to find the edit box display variable and you're in this tag browser now you don't want to go back here to the real-time DB and create a new variable so you can create a new variable right here in the tag browser just click new I'll call this one temp2 and it gives you that default variable and you can see all of the different properties here you can change those properties with a right click and then maybe I want this one also to be a float and retentive not shared okay so you can create these variables as you go now a few final comments on variables 
Unlike Motionworks IEC, Movicon does not follow IEC 61131, and variables are indeed case sensitive. You must use the exact same characters for all variables. If you do type the name of a variable wrong, or even capitalize it incorrectly, I'll try this here, I'll put in temp2 without the capital T, there is not going to be any error displayed. Uh, when you start the runtime, it will let you run it. There simply just won't be any data in here because there's no real variable to store that data. I'll close this. But you can prevent these kind of scenarios by using a window called the Refactoring Explorer. If you just click on the screen, it does a quick check to see if there's anything on this screen that is not going to function properly. And here you do see the Refactoring Explorer found that Temp2 has got a problem. If you don't see that, you can always go to the View menu to view the Refactoring Explorer. But I'd recommend that you follow the best practice that I've been demonstrating so far, which is that you don't simply type in the name of the variable here and rely on your memory of the spelling and capitalization, but that instead you go into the tag browser and select it from the list. If you know your variable naming structure, it's safe to go in there and change maybe a number one or number two, a small edit like this. But otherwise, I would strongly recommend that you take advantage of that tag browser. It's just a couple more keystrokes, and you can type right here in the filter. I hope these editing tips will help you as you move forward with this training and with your future HMI development projects. Thank you for watching this video, and please go to www.yaskawa.com HMI for more information on Yaskawa's HMI products and Movicon HMI Editor.